So hello everyone once again from the Socialist Republic of Vietnam. And a lot of you people need to take things with a little pinch of salt because I don't need an essay explaining why Vietnam isn't communist or socialist every time I open my video with that. It is a country run by a communist government. I don't think it's a communist utopia. A lot of people who write these comments probably aren't watching this one, but I'm gonna keep saying it, but just to let you know before you start writing that comment, that I'm not being 100% serious. I don't even know why I have to say that to start these videos, but I got a fair few comments in the last one. You guys can uh, give it a rest now, or you can write another one telling me how it's not socialist. But today we are talking about capitalist business ventures, and we are talking about the rise of anti-woke superhero stuff. So for this video, I thought it'd be good to contrast one relative success story with anti-woke superhero stuff, meaning that something that raised a lot of money and is seemingly quite popular for something that is like anti-woke. And then we're just gonna talk about this funny story, you guys probably have read this, about um, an anti-woke superhero movie just being involved in like some giant scam. I mean, conservatives and anti-woke stuff being involved in scams is pretty funny. And I just kind of want to talk about superheroes and like wokeness and just how anti-SJWs really interpret all this stuff. Because I do always find it funny what they consider woke. And it proves that woke really has no meaning because a lot of the times they use woke and it means like leftist identity politics as they see it, right? So they think about like visible inclusion of minority groups or LGBT characters and that's woke. But then sometimes what woke also means is when you include political themes, which are more like left wing challenging the status quo. So they can't really decide if woke means one of these things or it means both of them. But then it gets increasingly bizarre and it shows how you know full of garbage they are in this like anti-woke crusade is that they all talk about how great the new Dune movie is when Denis Villeneuve comes out and says that it's like anti-capitalist about colonialism and stuff. While the book is heavily influenced and has positive views about like Muslim revolutions against European colonialism. But that's not woke because they like that. But the themes of the book and the movie are very, very woke by their own standards. But then they will start attacking something like Black Panther or some sort of Marvel movie that has a gay character because apparently that's the most woke thing ever. But the superhero stuff they've always consumed has always been like relatively progressive, especially comics written by Marvel under the direction of Stan Lee. I'm not saying it was like communist or something, but it did have progressive liberal messaging. And it just shows these people's critical thinking skills are always terrible. Because a lot of the times they miss the messages of their favorite films and TV shows. So all of that coming up for you today. I know a few people wanted me to cover the Ripperverse stuff when it came out, you know, ages ago. So we're going to talk a bit about that. But before we go any further, please like the video. And in the comments, the question I would ask is, what is the most ridiculous thing you've seen that has marketed itself as anti-woke? It doesn't necessarily have to be like, even media related or comic book related. I'm just curious because as I was researching for this video, I stumbled across loads of things like comics and stuff that were marketing themselves as like anti-woke. And I was like, I haven't even heard of many of these things, which I think is pretty telling as we're gonna get into. But yeah, let me know. Also consider becoming a patron. I'm trying to build up as many one to $3 patrons as possible and the benefits of that are getting access to the Discord server and getting access to my Nintendo Switch friend code. I'm also posting one exclusive patron video per month about the country I have traveled to. So the Vietnam one, is up right now exclusive for patrons. I'm gonna film the one about Cambodia next and then, you know, so on, gonna film about various different countries. So if you care about that, become a patron. Also, if you care about keeping up with me on my travels, check out my Instagram highlight reels and just check out my Instagram in general at the Cavernacle and also at the Cavernacle on Twitter as well. Finally, check out the subreddit and my second channel down in the description. So I think tomorrow I'm gonna to do part two of my videos on like the history and lore of anti-SJW YouTube. Cause you guys remember, if you're old enough, there was a time 
where nerds, I guess, didn't freak out as much about supposed like wokeness or left-leaning messages. Of course, they have always done this, but it wasn't as much of a culture war thing. And of course, we see so many grifting YouTube channels just using it, going back to, I don't know, Star Wars The Force Awakens. But before we get into talking about like anti-woke comics and comic book movies, what I do find quite interesting is, as we established to start with, what woke means and stuff, a lot of these people act like that the things that Disney Marvel was pushing on us are like really, really left-wing messaging. And it's like, it's gonna condition us all into being socialist. But honestly, when it comes to like the MCU, at best, it pushes like a liberal view of the world, which still upholds like an American dominated status quo. At worst, it's just like military propaganda, right? I don't really watch any MCU things and think about how like woke and amazingly subversive they are in terms of their themes or political messaging. Like even something like Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and I made a whole video about this, while it touched on interesting things like the treatment of African Americans in American history with like an ex Captain America who fought in the Korean War and then was treated terribly by the American state, it won't really go into depth on that. And it won't even use that as an interesting, you know, character study and stuff. Because I always said I would have liked that show more if the older Captain America said he couldn't accept Sam Wilson becoming Captain America because it creates an interesting divide between these two and the generational divide of how they view themselves in America. And I think that would be far more interesting than what we got, but they're all best pals and he accepts Sam Wilson being Captain America. And then you have stuff like, you know, Black Panther touches on some interesting things, but I don't think any of these movies really push something I would consider radical politics. I'd say most of the messaging in Marvel films is pretty compatible with like an I'm still with her, Joe Biden supporting Democrat. I wouldn't say most of them. It has inherently radical politics, but then what is also interesting is it's not like we are lacking right-wing superhero stuff because Zack Snyder, obviously famous, libertarian has even adapted actually leftist superhero stuff and made it more like pro-libertarian like watchmen right alan moore's politics are literally like the polar opposite of Zack snyder's and also frank miller who is right wing himself has been adapted so much in some of the most like mainstream superhero shows like batman vs superman the movie a lot of the daredevil stuff from netflix it's not like conservatives haven't had a very big influence on the comic book industry and even the film industry. But I think the problem with anti-SJW YouTubers and just general conservatives is they actually think that there is an over-representation of more liberal types in the art world because there's some sort of like agenda or conspiracy theories. Not that to tell interesting stories a lot of the time, you have to come from like an interesting background that maybe doesn't match up with the dominant group in a certain country. You have to come at something through changing the status quo. And this creates like interesting stories and interesting characters. Making a movie about how great America is and how nothing should change and how great like religion and patriotism is, doesn't really sound very interesting to most people because you get that in your daily like propaganda on the news or just how you're conditioned throughout school. When these guys talk about escapism, they're like, I want to turn my brain off and not think about things. But for a lot of people, the escapism is escaping from the dominant narratives you're fed in society and watching something that either shows you something you've never heard of before or challenges your own views or challenges the dominance of a certain narrative in society. Generally, conservatives will not criticize the status quo. So that just inherently makes bad art. I'm not saying there aren't good conservative artists and filmmakers and actors because there are, but conservatives not realizing why there is an over-representation of more left-leaning people in like Hollywood, for example, makes me laugh. So yeah, comics have always been woke, but there have been comics which aren't woke, which were written by right-wing people like Frank Miller, which have been very successful as well. And I think the difference sometimes is back in the past, conservative people created art, but they didn't go around the media whining so much about how conservatives are like oppressed and censored. So you didn't really know their politics as much, but nowadays, if there is like a famous like conservative anything, They've got to go on Fox News or the Daily Wire and talk about like the lefties ruining everything. And they have to essentially become a pawn in the culture war rather than just like chilling in the background and like making their movies or writing their films and stuff. They have to become involved in the political scene themselves. But maybe in this current era, there is a clamor for anti-woke superheroes. Maybe 
Conservative audiences do not feel represented by pretty much every superhero being a white straight man anymore and they don't like how the Marvel Cinematic Universe generally props up an American dominated status quo and can sometimes act as military propaganda. They want something different. Now some of you guys asked me to cover this back when it was released. So a guy called Eric July is a YouTuber who actually released his own comic book and I think he's creating his own like comic book universe, right? And by all accounts, it's done fairly well. And basically he is an anti sw YouTuber. He's part of like the Geeks and Gamers circle. And they all had him on, they all collaborated with him to promote this comic. And then they made loads of videos about how well it was doing and how it was driving the lefties insane. Honestly, I don't care if some anti sw YouTuber makes a comic. And if people want it and buy it, then I don't care. Like, why would I care? People watch his YouTube channel, people support his YouTube channel. If they want to buy a comic made by him, does not drive me crazy. And if he is making it like an anti-left, anti-woke comic, again, I don't care. But I still want to talk about it because it's interesting. And what's pretty clear to me is at least partly the relative success of this is because he's been promoted so much by the conservative media machine. From Superman to Thor, comic book characters are getting woke a woke makeover. We've been telling you about this. But you have a new comic book publisher promising to ignore cancel culture and it is paying off. Ripper vs. Debut, comic book number one, Isom, is, near, is number one, nearly made $3 million already, showing no signs of stopping. Founder of Ripperverse Comics, Eric July, an artist behind it all of Isom, Gabe Abdul, Abdullah El Talib joins us now. Congratulations to both of you. I guess let's start with you, if we can, Eric. What gave you this idea? What prompted you to do what you did in October? Well, you know, I'd been talking about this for a little bit. I've been in the commentary space, certainly on YouTube, various other channels, talking about comic books and the state of it and having my complaints. What I wanted to do was be a part of the solution instead of always griping about the problem. So I had the idea. It's made sense financially. It was the perfect time to do it. And, um, you know, I spent about a, a, almost a year and a half or so really trying to get this bad boy off of the ground. And we finally, of course, just announced it and it reassured everything that I had been saying. Um, but also that this American comic book market is still kind of thirsty for this type of material. Here to help me make sense of this is not only a uh, really high level, extremely insightful cultural critic, but also a, a comic book mogul himself. That would be Eric July. Eric, thank you for coming on the show. I'm not really trying to beat anybody's head over uh, uh, with politics or anything, not even my own. You know what I mean? I just want to give people material that they can be entertained by, kind of get lost in. And yeah, it, it will expand into other types of entertainment. We, we're starting with the books. I'm pretty certain he's hired a pretty good PR firm because when you type in this guy and you type in the Ripperverse, you get loads of articles which you can notice straight away are pretty much done by PR. And they might look like news articles, but trust me, these aren't organic. These are either paid for or they've hooked up him with someone they know. But the New York Post wrote an article, anti-woke comic book defies cancel culture, <laughs> earns $1.7 million in four days. In a world full of woke culture, one man is taking a stand. Writer, content creator, and musician Eric July is adding a new feather to his cap. Comic book creator. July officially launched the first comic book, Isum Volume 1, through publishing company Ripperverse on Monday, and it's a smashing success. His book has already brought in more than $1.7 million in pre orders in just the first four days. Nearly 19,000 people have pre ordered, but not everyone is happy about it. It created a stir on social media, particularly Reddit, where promotional videos for the comic book were banned from certain subreddits for supporting comics from hate groups. July said he's on a mission to spread liberty, speak out against nonsense, and work towards a more free and prosperous society. To see the industry go in the direction that it's gone kind of lights a fire under you. It's not like it's getting any better. So Isum 1 follows the story of Avery Silman, a common rancher in Floor Park, Texas, who obtained some unique abilities and spent a brief time acting as a hero under the moniker Isum, Isum. Things take a turn for Silman when he gets a call from his sister about an old friend who's become one of the most feared men in the city. Silman goes to visit his childhood friend and ends up in some violent altercations as he's sucked back into the world of accepts or special beings. The 96 page comic book will serve as a launching pad for the entire Ripperverse comics universe. Just like most anti SJW YouTubers and the Geeks and Gamers crew, I of course fundamentally hate this guy's politics and I really disagree with his political views. But again, if there is like some sort of niche for anti-woke comics, I don't know why the whole Geeks and Gamers ecosystem 
were making videos about left wing people freaking out. They were clearly just exaggerating people not wanting you know his work to be plastered all over their subreddits because of his hateful political views now i was trying to find an actual review of this guy's comics and it feels like his audience are just in a big echo chamber and not many people outside of conservative circles have actually taken any interest in this because again i couldn't even find anyone who wasn't a conservative talking about this comic at all I couldn't find anyone talking about if it was good or bad. I did find some conservatives saying it's like poorly written and it was written by July and they're saying the dialogue is quite awkward in some places and they just don't feel it's good, but they will happily support it because it's anti-woke. And again, I don't have any numbers, but you know, raising 1.7 million and then going around, you know, the whole media circuit, it was on Fox News, he was on the Daily Wire talking about your comic book, I'm sure actually will generate you some buzz and some money so i'm not doubting that i am kind of doubting the quality and also on the subreddit which i was reading there are some concerns that he actually isn't working too hard on this project because they're clamoring for the next couple issues of the first comic book he launched and they get a bit worried that he's not actually going to finish them apparently the new issue is written it's just not illustrated so we'll see how long this lasts we'll see if there really is a hunger for the Ripperverse continuing into the future. And there's just one post I want to read to you from their Reddit, um, which made me laugh. So I must admit, I love how Ripperverse exposed just how full of shit the woke who go on about diversity and inclusion actually are. On the surface, the Ripperverse should be everything the woke who spent years going on about diversity, inclusion, empowering voices and comics for everyone wanted. They should be thrilled by this. Consider independent black owned comic book business that was built from the ground up as a passion project the main book was written by said black founder drawn by a brazilian colored by a libyan american stars a black protagonist who's the title character the most important supporting character is a black woman and his sister main antagonist is black as is one of the major antagonists one of the major characters who's a front and center strong female superhero and already a fan favorite another major antagonist force consists of two different and distinct men and a woman Overall, an already very diverse cast, as you can tell just by the image here. Said diverse comic by a diverse creative team by a black-owned independent business sets an all-time record, making over $3.6 million, which is practically unheard of. And yet these same people are not happy about it. They're absolutely furious because Eric has a view they don't approve of and either want to smear it like with bleeding cool or ban any and all discussion for it for being hate speech. To me, it's just amusing how the Ripperverse had made it so plainly obvious that the real agenda is control and these so-called anti-racists are the actual racists they were all along anyone else thought of this. I'm always here for a bit of either conservative identity politics or conservatives trying to throw identity politics in the left's face. And recently, conservatives in the UK have been doing this with Rishi Sunak. And they're like, we've had three women prime ministers and now we have the first Asian prime minister of the UK. Look how progressive and look how accepting we all are. And I think it also shows how these guys don't really understand what woke means even to left wing people because I don't personally care if there's a comic book that has a very diverse cast, but is written by a guy with terrible politics and is probably putting that politics in his work. Why would I be happy about that? The same way I'm not happy Rishi Sunak is the Prime Minister of the UK because I'm not an idiot who just sees like, oh, he's Asian, therefore good. Especially in a certain context, right? So Eric July only got the funding for this because he's a prominent conservative commentator. He only made as much money as he did for this because he was able to do the media rounds on the biggest cable news show in America, Fox News, and go on like the Daily Wire and stuff to get his funding. But loads of different really hateful organizations are involved in this in terms of like generating buzz and funding. So why would I be happy with that? And apparently it's not even that good, even according to some conservatives. And like that post was saying that like the left are the real racist. Again, I love conservative identity politics. So apparently now we're racist because we don't like a comic written by a black guy starring black characters. But when you are called racist for legitimately not liking stuff purely because it has a diverse cast, then that's okay according to you guys. Like you guys can hate all this stuff. You can hate literally the Woman King just because it's about like African history. You can hate the Little Mermaid solely because Ariel is now black while not knowing anything about the politics involved in that film or the creators. But when we don't like a comic book, written by a guy who has very well documented political beliefs and associations with like racists and terrible conservative people, 
then apparently we are the racist. Like, try and make that one make sense. But, you know, apparently this is successful. Apparently this has made a lot of money and apparently people generally like it. So it's a product people like and there is some niche for anti-woke superhero stuff. Doesn't mean it's any good, just means conservatives are idiots and will pay for stuff that reaffirms their own political views. So we've gone through a relative success story of anti-woke comics. And now let's get onto a funnier story of a massive fail of an anti-woke superhero property. Now you guys probably have seen this, I've seen other channels covering it, but I just wanted to cover it myself, so let's get into this. So, Daily Beast, Will Sommer, anti-woke superhero movie blown up in $1 million con. An attempt to make a right-wing superhero movie has ended in disaster with $1 million missing in China and a participant facing a federal indictment. I wouldn't count on us getting the money back, Theodore Beale, a far-right blogger known as Vox Day, admitted to his fans and investors in a video last week. This isn't how Beale's followers thought their investments would go in 2019 when they started contributing to fund a film based on a confederacy-themed superhero comic book character created by Beale. A trailer promoting the proposed movie, Rebels Run, featured the character Rebel fighting a global police force hunting down free-thinking conservatives. Frequent Tucker Carlson collaborator Scooter Downey signed on to direct. Beale supporter rapidly blew past an initial 750k funding goal, ultimately raising more than $1 million. That money was supposed to be held to secure several million more dollars in funding, Three years later, the cash is gone and Beale's hope for the movie. Beale and his history of racism could have made it difficult for Rebels Run, which stars a character sometimes depicted in a Confederate flag bustier, to find traditional financing. Given that track record, he instead turned to Utah-based Ohana Capital Financial, a business aimed at customers that would struggle to get money elsewhere. As Ohana's promotional material puts it, according to prosecutors, the firm offered banking to the unbankable, on November 5th, 2020, Beale transferred the $1 million to Ohana to be held in escrow in advance of future film funding. Ohana was a creation of James Wolfgram, a self-described cryptocurrency billionaire who posted pictures of sports cars that supposedly belonged to him on social media. But in fact, according to a federal indictment filed last month, Wolfgram's wealth was a sham. The sports car pictures, for example, were pulled from other websites. His businesses also sold what were billed as high-tech cryptocurrency mining rigs, but those were a hoax, according to prosecutors, with their screens just running on a loop to create the illusion of mines. Unbeknownst to Beale, Wolfgram was deeply in debt to one of his other clients. That client had paid Ohana more than $4 million in September 2020 as part of a payment to a Chinese manufacturer of PPE. Instead of carrying out the transaction, prosecutors allege Wolfram spent the million on his own business issues. Now seven figures in the hole with no PPE to show for it, Wolfgram allegedly used the Rebels Run money to buy the Chinese medical equipment. Soon after that, according to a video Beale released to his fans, the blogger and his collaborators became suspicious and contacted the FBI, sparking the investigation into Wolfgram. Wolfram now faces four counts of wire fraud over the Rebels Run money and other aspects of his business. Beale claims without evidence that the alleged con was carried out to disrupt his right-wing fan base, I strongly suspect that this whole thing was a targeted operation intended to break our community. That story is just hilarious and really couldn't have happened to a nicer person, you know? Like, feeling so sad that all these investors and Beal himself lost a million dollars. And also, one thing you guys might have noticed, which was really funny, that they went to the FBI to investigate this guy, right? I love how these conservatives, like, want small government, they hate the government, they hate the feds, but then as soon as something goes wrong, FBI, come help me, come save my money for my racist superhero movie. But I do find it funny that all these things have to be crowdfunded because what these guys know is not only is there not a clamor for like hard right, I guess, superhero content, it's also just not gonna play well with general audiences because by and large, most like overtly political things like this are shit. Like I haven't read the Ripperverse. I don't know if its messaging is about American conservatism, but this movie here, Rebels Run, again, it was gonna be terrible. No matter how much funding they got, if this guy was involved in making it, it was going to be crap. So are we going to see a rise of successful anti-woke projects? Honestly, I can't see it. I think this stuff will always be relegated to Patreon pages and stuff like that because sure, 
Can you get enough people interested in these projects that they could fund it to a fairly significant degree? Of course you could. And that is kind of like why Patreon exists in the first place. And so many creators make a whole living off it. Think of like YouTubers that I like, like Jenny Nicholson just released a video about some theme park nobody has ever heard of, right? And she's been working on that for like over a year, but she exists because she's funded by her Patreon page and there's a desire for that. So you can always find people willing to fund these things and it can reach a bigger level, but there is no way in hell I see something like The Daily Wire ever gaining the success of like mainstream films. I just don't think there's a desire across the general populace to watch terrible movies just because they push conservatism. And I would even wager if it became the reality where Daily Wire movies were released like across America, I think they would even do poorly in conservative areas because if the political propaganda is not entertaining as well, I think these people will grow bored of it. Like they love Top Gun because it reaffirmed their political positions about loving the US military and the Navy and stuff. But as someone who likes Top Gun, you like the film because it's got really well-crafted action sequences and you can see the effort that went into the movie. If we just watched a low budget movie about how great the US Navy was, loads of people who watch Top Gun would not go and see that movie, even if they agreed with the politics of that movie. I don't think anti-woke superheroes are gonna become a major thing across the world. All that I will say, isn't the new Captain America film featuring an Israeli superhero who was literally in Mossad. So conservatives, you don't even need to make your anti-woke superheroes now. Marvel's doing it for you. Anyway, that is it for the video. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.